In this video, I'll be running through conversion modeling and how it's skewing your attributed numbers within your Facebook ad dashboard. This is something that most marketers don't even know exists and exists at the campaign ad set and ad level. So getting an understanding of how conversion modeling even works and how it's essentially falsifying conversions within your data set is really, really important. I'm sure that most people who have spent enough time within meta ads have looked down to the daily data level. So they've looked at how many conversions occurred yesterday and they saw one conversion for let's say $109. And they thought that looked a bit weird because when they went and looked on the back end of Shopify at the individual order data, they weren't actually able to find this conversion. Now the conversion might've been attributed to the wrong day. So you can look at the day before, the day after, maybe even a few days prior, but you'll never end up finding the conversion. And this happens a lot, particularly with startups or brands that launch into a new geo. Now, what's happening here is that Facebook is modeling a conversion. Facebook is saying that this user likely actually purchased from you and likely spent about $109. And so we're going to just place that into the attribution of that campaign, even though Facebook actually never saw it happen. The reason why Facebook does this is because there's a lot of missing or partial data when any ad platform tries to attribute conversions. And I'll provide you with a really quick example. If I clicked on an ad on my mobile and then I wanted to convert, but I wanted to convert on my desktop and I went over to my computer and went through and bought, it would be very, very unlikely that that conversion would be tracked cross platform. And therefore Facebook would go and try to model or predict whether I actually went and purchased on another platform or not. Now this is both a bad and a good thing. The bad part of it is that you're getting fake conversions that aren't actually occurring, getting modeled into your data set. And so the row as that you're seeing isn't actually correct. Um, but the good thing about it is Facebook has a good intent, which is that they want to have as much conversion data as possible so that they can fuel their machine learning models. If they're only tracking 10 conversions, but in reality, 12 are occurring, 12 conversions will make a substantial difference to the quality of the target demographic model that the pixel is building on who it should prioritize within the campaign. Let me provide you with a really extreme example of this because some people watching this video might be in this exact scenario right now. We took on a client that was spending $30,000 per month on Facebook. And as I audited the account, I saw conversion rates were sitting at 10%, which immediately tells you that there's over attribution and that Facebook isn't really driving anywhere near the conversion volume that they're claiming. Now, typically most of that will be through one day view. And so you can do a one day view exclusion to see the real return on ad spend. But even when we excluded one day view, there was still significant over attribution. So we tried installing new pixels. We refreshed the pixel. We changed the configuration. We tried to fix it in five to 10 different ways and we could never fix the over attribution. And the reason for this is because the ad account back in 2019 was actually driving a 10 return on ad spend. And then as iOS 14 hit, there was a significant decrease in the performance of this particular account because the conversion window of a user sat at 28 days. So on average for this brand, a user takes 28 days to purchase. When Facebook shrunk all the click windows down to seven days, the ad account was significantly impacted because it couldn't track the majority of users that were converting. And so the ad account started just modeling conversions and just saying, well, we used to convert at a 10 ROAS. And so we're going to predict into the future that we're still converting at a 10 ROAS when the ad account wasn't. And so we cut spend to $0 through an incrementality test. And we saw a 0% change to top line revenue and new customer acquisition. And so that's a really extreme example of how modeling conversions can be completely skewing your budget allocation to the platform if you don't understand what's actually going on in the background. Now I've pulled an excerpt from a Facebook resource here, which also describes how Facebook doesn't just model at the campaign level, but they'll model in partial data all the way down to the ad level. And so an example of this is let's say that Facebook does track that a user converted through a campaign, but they weren't able to track due to uh, third party cookie restrictions or whatever it might be, what individual ad or ad set the user came from it will try to predict it and allocate it accordingly. And so you can see sometimes conversions may be missing or partial at some reporting levels. And in order to provide more intuitive and complete reporting, we may need to distribute conversions among ad breakdowns from the campaign to ad level. We start with measurable conversions and then we model the likelihood of a conversion occurring from a click or an impression from a lower down level within campaign ad set ad. And so what ends up happening here is that if you're looking at ad attribution and you're trying to figure out which individual ad within a campaign is performing the best, once again, you're likely looking at skewed data. A lot of those conversions, or at least a non-zero proportion of those conversions are coming from modeled 
data. So not actual people that clicked and converted. And so it just goes to show the importance of anytime you're making a decision within the Facebook ad platform, you need to be making that decision using statistically relevant data, meaning do not make a decision off one conversion, three conversions, even five or 10. You want large statistical relevancy so that you can ensure that modeling conversions isn't skewing the account.